Hello. All right, it's day four, and I'm tired too, but y'all got to do better than that. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, welcome to Clout Chasers Anonymous. <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean, in this economy, a frank and open discussion on being a content creator. So I am your moderator, and I'm clearly full of spice today. I hope you're ready. All right, a little bit of housekeeping uh, for those of you in the audience and those of you watching at home on PAX3. Feel free to tweet. Um, if you'd like to take photos of the, of the panelists, please give your consent. You do not need to video record us. That's a little weird because you're sitting in the audience. If you're at home, you're watching on Twitch, you really don't need to make clips unless you want to. Um, big thing for me as a moderator, when we get to Q&A, have a question. We will call you forth. We will ask you for a question. And if you do not have one, I will tell you to go find a question. Every time I hear people laugh, I'm like, where's the joke? <laughs> um, they are interrogative, not declarative. And again, I will ask you to go find a question. This is the panel description that is on PAX's site, what we submitted. I don't worry, I'm not gonna read slides at you because I hated that when I had a regular day job. But I will leave this up here for a hot second so you can read it. And we are going to be very blunt. We're going to try not to be rude, but we are going to do our best to give you some no holds barred, no cushioning advice slash discussion on being a content creator. But before we do any of that, we're going to uh, introduce ourselves. I'm going to start at the end. So who are you, your pronouns, and what kind of content do you create? Hi, everyone. My name is Henry. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. Um, I'm a Twitch streamer. I also um, work a lot on podcasting and photo video work. Um, and like content creation wise, I do a lot of um, Valorant, unfortunately. And then I do a lot of uh, farming survival for um, a lot of like virtual TTRPG. So like Celasta, Baldur's Gate. Um, but yeah, mostly live on Twitch and on socials. Hello, I'm Calamity. I have been to two cons this week, so forgive my voice. Um, but I am, uh, my pronouns are she, they. I am a content creator, streamer, YouTuber, uh, YouTuber, VTuber, as well as a tabletop performer and producer. I am Raven, also known as Wreck-It Raven everywhere on the internet. Um, my pronouns are they, she. I do a lot of horror content. I also do a lot of TTRPG content. I'm in more actual plays. Uh, than I care to admit. Uh, some of them are really good, some of them are one-shots, and some of them have ended, uh, but that's where you can see me most. Uh, I'm your moderator, Tanya Seifertier. I do a little bit of everything. I like to joke that I'm a jack of all trades, master of none, but I do a lot of long-form RPGs like Dragon Age, Mass Effect, Baldur's Gate 3, The Witcher. I also do creative. I paint minis, make dice, and I do TTRPG um, content as well. I'm on Rivals Waterdeep, and I was on Black Dice Society and do a lot of one-shots and charity, etc. And yeah, I do a lot of talking on the internet about these things. Hi, everybody. I'm Eugenio. I'm DM Jazzy Hands on the internet. Uh, I'm a streamer on Twitch, uh, as well as a tabletop role-playing game designer and writer and GM. Um, I just recently wrapped uh, a almost six-year-long podcast as the producer and DM of that show uh, and work as a guest and GM on some other podcasts. So a little bit of everything in that space and then still trying to claw my way back into the uh, theater industry, which is where I started before the pandemic and and I moved to games. My pronouns are he, him, thank you. And hello, I'm Mandy uh, around the internet as Lady Luck 34 my pronouns are she, her. Uh, I'm a variety streamer uh, and occasional moderator for others and clipping of things, and I do a mix of whatever video game I'm playing at any given time, as well as uh, crafting content like sewing and crochet. Uh, and I'm the worst, I forgot my pronouns, which are she, her. So, what this panel is not. Uh, I'm not gonna read this at you, but if anyone has thoughts or wants to elaborate on anything that we're not gonna talk about before we move on to our content, I've stumped the panel. I'd rather just not talk about it and move forward. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm giving everyone their chance to, to speak. I, I, no, nah, I'm good. Like, okay. that, that's, pretty, that's pretty good. Agreed, that's everything I can think of. We're all short and can't read the screen. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm the one with the laptop, so. <laughs> all right, so 
the discussion and we also said this is going to be no holds barred. We are not going to be rude to you, but we are going to be very blunt in what we discuss. So I would like everyone starting with Henry to kind of touch on these points because some people still don't know these things. They really do think that having a check mark, a high follower count, means you must be rich. And can I tell you that is the biggest lie. So of course. So how I'm going to talk today is basically I can only tell you what I know. Um, I, this is actually a great panel because we all have very different experiences. And I think that's probably going to be my biggest takeaway. But um, I totally agree with the sentiment. Um, just to tell you a little bit about myself, my name is Henry. I said I'm a streamer. Um, I want to give you just some insight into like I'm only have like a thousand followers like my CCV isn't that high and I've only been doing it for about two years. However, like in those two years, I do feel like I've gotten some like really great opportunities like, to be on this panel um, as well as TwitchCon and at those events. Um, and it's just like it's obviously again, I don't have a big fo like, follower account on TikTok or anything like that. And there's just a lot of other options, decisions and ways to go about getting to where you need to be and on that path that's right for you, that isn't just growing social or followers or viewers. That was actually really uh, good and I have nothing to add um, other than to just kind of echo everything. Um, I wish that your views and follower count and all that actually, you know, equal dollars, but it doesn't. It's not something that you're going to get into and get rich quick, so. Oh, you didn't you didn't get the check with the uh, your check mark? No, oh. no, I didn't. No. So I, I was the lost. I'm the only one. Okay. I guess I got lost. Um, contrary to popular belief, if you get a check mark on Twitch on Twitter, even though you can buy those now, sorry, not sorry, um, oh. it doesn't come with a check. You are not get handed a six figure check with your check mark. It is because you have hit some very basic. I say basic, it's hard work, but you have hit all three of these, these bits of criteria that have been given to you. Um, I wish that I had, you know, money to pay my bills, but I don't. This is not a career for the faint of heart. It is not a career for somebody who is expecting to get rich quick. That is not how it works. You have to do so much in this space. And because I am a femme presenting person, doesn't mean that it is easier for me. I don't get to sit down and just like, because I have boobs, I am given money. That's not at all how it works. I wish, I wish, right? That would be really easy. Um, but a lot of times you have to fight hard to earn any and every little bit that you get in this space. And I just realized as Raven was talking, I should have amended this and maybe uh, Mandy might have thought, but I should have had a stereotypically attractive femme presenting folks because my experience has been very different as someone who is not the beauty standard. I've been called a man and ugly and called an ogre because I don't like do makeup. I don't I don't do all the quote unquote expected standard beauty things and I'm not like a size zero white girl. That's never going to happen. So that is something you have to think about too is that the ways in which we perceive people and I know a lot of people like do themselves up for streams, they put on makeup, maybe it's part of their content, but that is still them on screen. It is not them when the lights are off, when the computer's off. Um, but either one of you have thoughts on these points. I'll give you a moment based on that sound you just gave me. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, I don't wanna, uh, yes, excellent, all true, and I don't need to rehash any of it. You know, the thing that I'll say that I, I'm sure we'll get into it in a little more depth a little bit later, but the first thing on this slide, visibility does not equal dollars, like follower accounts views. That's absolutely true and is a thing that we as content creators really need to internalize because otherwise this difficult path is even more difficult. But speaking of things that make it harder on us, right? We're still very much in a period in content creation, particularly Twitch and gaming streaming and that sort of thing, where the concept of a micro influencer isn't, is still, we're still figuring out what that means. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, that means someone who has a relatively small 
call it what you will, following or CVV or whatever, right? But who's still able to get that small community to activate on a product or an event or a something, right? Sometimes those of us with smaller communities actually have a better pulse on what we can get our community to like and do and buy, right? But those people who are giving us opportunities and sponsorships and partnerships, that's still a real shaky concept for them. And so we have this real weird, like double-edged sword of we cannot live and die by our follower count. We cannot live and die by our view count because that way lies, you know, just uh, what I don't want to use a, a actual diagnosable mental health word, but like it doesn't feel good, right? And on the other side, we do have to be concerned about those numbers. We do have to work at those numbers because that's how we get opportunities with organizations and, co and companies and partners that are actually going to pay those bills that we were talking about, right? So. This is going to come back around, I have a feeling, several times over the next 49 minutes. But there's a lot of that, like, taking care of yourself while recognizing that you're working within a system that, like, requires a little bit of, well, depending on what, it, you know, numbers or whatever it is. And that's a, real, that's a real hard line to walk sometimes. And I think one of the other things, too, is that uh, technology, as it's progressed, has made the barrier to entry much lower. So you can just hop onto a console and make a Twitch account and go live. But the back end work that you need to do to support that and to really grow is obnoxiously large. <laughs> like, there's so much you have to do to be able to build it into a sustainable business if that's what your goal is and and to finance yourself and i think that's the place where it's like yeah there it, it is possible to just start streaming and to have fun doing it but if you want this to support you financially as a career there's so much more you have to put into it and i think to the point of of talking about you know what we consider especially for fem presenting and whether you're you know traditionally, I guess, attractive, is there's some nonsense, y'all. Like, I've had people show up in chat and be like, hey, I know somebody who's looking for a girlfriend. How would you feel about that? I was like, Ben, please go someplace else. Um, and the flip side, too, is you, you are your brand. So thinking about what you're presenting, like, let's be real. Y'all show up while I'm doing a sewing stream. I'm probably wearing T-shirt and jeans. I'm going to mess everything up because I'm still learning. And it's not going to look like a professional. But that's the brand I chose for myself, which is that, like, hey, I've been learning this. So guess what? That's what you're getting. But you have to think about that, which is like, what is the identity that I've chosen for my brand if you want to build it into a business? And I think a lot of times it's just like, I'm just going to start. Cool. Not judging you for that. Everybody's journey is going to be different. But these are the things you want to think about if you want to build into being somebody who's working with brands and working with organizations and getting those bigger opportunities. Hey, Mandy, since you brought up um, money, yeah. <laughs> that was a very good segue that I didn't even plan. I'm so happy. Um, this was one of my points uh, because I feel like it's something that we've seen. We've done multiple panels at different shows, um, and it always comes up where people's like, yeah, my goal is to be a content creator. And I'm like, really? That's, that's like your, your dream? Uh, no judgment. But I don't think people consider the back end, which is, do the math. What's your rent? What are your utilities? What are all your other bills, insurance? What else do you have to pay? Sit down and say, how much do I need to make in a month to meet the basic needs of my life? And then go take a look at Twitch and say, I make 250 per tier one sub. How many of those do you need? So many. So many. So many. <laughs> to like consistently, month over month, to hit those numbers for you to be able to sustain your basics of your life, like rent. And I think a lot of people aren't doing that. They're just like, yeah, I'm going to make it big. Like a lot of uh, organizations and things you work with, like you're not always getting paid for that. It's just like, hey, we'll give you a code and we'll promote when you stream it. All right, cool. Like that's nice. I don't have to spend the 60 bucks to buy the game, but you're not paying me for that time. Yeah. <laughs> I have so much respect for anybody who is uh, what we think of as like a full-time streamer, right? Their main job is their 
Twitch channel. That is not something that I do. I'm really fortunate to be able to make my living in games and content creation, but it's certainly not through my Twitch channel. Uh, that's a great place where I have built a community and have lots of supporters, and I do make money that way. But to the, to the second paragraph, to the point that the second paragraph makes up there, not only are you wearing a ton of hats for your own brand and your own channel or business or whatever it is, and that's absolutely true, marketing, branding, networking, but at least in my case, and if, and if you're really not hanging everything on your own channel, that also means you're wearing a bunch of hats. I wear a hat when I am playing with Rivals of Waterdeep, and that is a job that pays me often more month over month than my channel does. I have to wear the hat of a GM if I'm working for Codename Entertainment on a stream of theirs, and I'm running a game for them for eight weeks. That is a job that pays me more than my channel does. I still need to maintain my channel, right? Because how do people find out about that game on Codename or next week's Rivals episode or whatever? But, you know, be prepared to either really dive deep and be ready to take a while to build your channel and your brand, or be ready to wear tons of hats and take lots of jobs across a lot of areas, because, yeah, it, it adds up, right? And 250 a sub, particularly if you're just starting out, right? If you're, certainly if you haven't made that partner level, right? If, I think it's 75, to be very honest and clear about the situation. I'm, actually, can we do this real quick? Who, is, who on the, with the table is a partner on Twitch? Great, and are the rest of us affiliates? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so, you know, if we're not hitting even 75 average viewers a stream, I'm, I'm not paying my rent with subs, right? Because not everyone at the stream is a sub and, and, and so on and so forth. So yeah, diversifying and being ready to really take opportunities when they come. And I'm gonna let somebody else talk, but I just wanna say like, and there's that dichotomy again, because you wanna take everything that gets offered to you because you need to make that money. And then, and then you burn out, right? So there, there's all of this balance and planning. Yes, I can turn on my PlayStation and sign into Twitch and stream, but if you're gonna do this as something that you really wanna rely on, there is so many things to really make sure that, that you are eyes open about. I, it's not to say don't do it, it's just you have to be eyes open. Wow, I feel so called out. <laughs> that's how I started streaming. Well, YouTube. and there's nothing wrong with that, right? As you go forward, no, I, I, I know you're joking, but like, it's true, right? I mean, to some extent, same. But very quickly, you know, if it's going to be something that you rely on, there's, I mean, it's a business like any other, right? And that, that requires a certain business savvy. And I want to just touch on, and I'll tell on myself, because I have no shame in this, I've said this on my stream and elsewhere. <laughs> I've sat down and done the math. So I live in Chicago, but, you know, I don't have pets, don't have children, live on my own. But even with that, to pay just my rent and the basics of internet, electricity, phone, Consistently, I would need a thousand to fifteen hundred subscribers because Twitch takes half off the top. This is before any partners get a little bit more at tier three, but I can I will tell you, I have three tier three subs, and they're all longtime friends who support the channel. So that is, you know, everyone's like, oh my god, there's so much money. Don't forget we have to pay taxes. Mm. Everyone's like, remember, April 15th is coming, go pay your taxes. Um, <laughs> But so, also, there's no health insurance if you are a full-time creator. You have to get whatever health insurance you can buy on the open market, and often that's more expensive than if you had a day job and that is taken out of your paycheck before you get it. Don't get sick. Don't have an emergency. Don't have a pet or a kid. And I can feel like everyone on the, channel, on the table who has a pet or a child looking at me. But those are all the things that people don't think about when they want to go, I'm going to go stream, especially with COVID happening and people losing their day job and thinking, I'll just sit at home and play Fortnite. How's that working out for so many of you? The same people that start, and this isn't like, oh, well, you shouldn't stream because COVID and we were all at home. This is a, I need you to touch reality. I have been doing content creation for about 10 years. I still cannot pay all my bills off of one particular venue, be that Twitch, YouTube. Diversity Consulting has paid me the most money, and if things go well and I get a nice gig, I might be able to pay a couple months rent off one gig, but I gotta wait 30 days, 45 days, 60 days. And the, other, and the last thing before uh, I move on and let Raven speak is that, you know, talking about the many hats, I can't draw, I have no Photoshop skills, I have to spend money to be able to use Canva or other things. Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> 
See, the, the, they've been my friends for too long. They're making fun of me as I talk. I was making fun of myself. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, I couldn't hear you, so I didn't know. I think the worst. But you know, like the $150 a year I spend on Canva, that's got to come from somewhere. Um, you know, paying my internet every month, having reliable internet costs me to something a month. And that's a lot, but business class internet means most of the time I will have internet. We're at home all day now. Electricity costs you a lot of money. And imagine your computer room is hot. You need to have air conditioning. You need to have fans on. If you're streaming all day, when do you have time to cook? You're ordering in more. All these little things add up. They're going to chip in all that money that you think you're going to make. And again, not trying to crush dreams. We're just trying to prepare you for you have to put in the work. And we're going to repeat that a lot over this panel. But there is no shortcut. There is no getting around it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to touch. I mean, that, that is very true. I'm sorry. My brain just was like, I have a thought. I need to say it now. <laughs> um, these are all very good points. Um, I know me personally, I do have children. I have a cat. I have a husband. We have bills that we need to pay. Um, we can't do it off my content creation alone. That's the dream. I'd love to be there, but I also understand that I have responsibilities. So while I do sit down and stream, most of the money that I make in content creation is not from streaming. Um, a lot of it is, you know, people ask hiring me for actual plays or, uh, you know, hiring me to help, you know, create monsters because I like doing that. I have to cough. I'm going to try not to. Um, or, you know, I, if I do get a big sponsored gig, like Tanya said, I have to wait 30, 45 days for that money to come through. And then I have to make that last for two plus months because I don't know when the next gig is going to come my way. The other thing that I really want to instill in everybody is to do your due diligence because there are companies out there that will take advantage of you at the drop of a hat. There are companies out there that seem legitimate, but they are not. So that is one of the many hats that I know that I have to wear quite frequently because people will be like, oh, Raven, like, I love your platform. I love what you stand for. Uh, push my product. And then I find out it's like, I don't know, some energy supplement that like has no like roots down anywhere um, and has a history of being problematic. You have to look into these things because you have to understand that you are your brand and anything and everything can be used against you. Um, people will try to cancel you over the silliest things. Um, and another thing that I will say is don't do anything in the dark that you don't want to come to light. Um, know that you have to be who you are and, and move through this space because if you are caught talking about somebody in the dark, companies included, and that comes out, you will be blacklisted from so many different opportunities because you made that mistake. You are allowed to have your own opinions, thoughts, and feelings, but carry yourself in a professional manner. Do not start belittling people or talking down about people or companies or anything because you can and will ruin the opportunities that you may have in the future. Um, to kind of like go back to what Tanya was saying earlier, um, the, the expenses that um, personally I make from content creation go right back into content creation. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is funding Canva. It is funding the, the software that I use to do my taxes because they're a lot. Um, you know, the, it, when you see people say like, oh, I'm a content creator, it is, it, it has so many other roles and other things under that. You are your own marketer, you're your own branding, you are your own manager <laughs> in most cases, you know, um, until you can get to a point where you can, you know, reach out to afford help and things like that. Um, you, I lost my thought, it went away, just like, I just saw it, it went, goodbye. It's day four, it's, it's okay. <laughs> It'll come back, because we're gonna talk about this day more. day four, no, but um, the, the expenses are going to be hefty, and something that, with, with taking on all these different responsibilities and all these different jobs to kind of help support you, that's also burning your time, your energy, 
if you have family, if you have loved ones, pets, like you also need to give attention to them and that's going to take away from it. So finding that balance is honestly, when y'all let me, when y'all figure it out, let me know. But <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really difficult. It is expensive, but you are also sacrificing, you know, your time, which is invaluable. Yeah, I would say that something that's always good to think about is people who make their money just off one platform or avenue. Those are the exception and not the rule. Mm. Um, when it regards to expensive, I mean, full like transparency, the only reason I can do things like do a panel in Amsterdam or um, go to San Diego or come here is because I have like a full time day job that like allows me to do that. I'm the, just, I'm an EA to a CEO and an office manager for a media company in New York City. Um, very grateful for that. That does require my work 40, out, like 40 plus hours a week. And then like in a very different sense of how much work this all takes, I do that and then come back to stream a lot more or like to try to stream and then also build that on top of that. But like that's how I go like in funding and supporting like my content creation. Like just recently I was like, I'm like, oh, maybe I like can actually afford to pay someone in for a TikTok. But that's only because my main source of income that allows me to do this sits outside of content creation, but it's what supports and is getting me to where I need and want to be. So I'm very grateful for that. However, it is, it comes with a very different set of obstacles and challenges. Um, and, but it's just what's working for me. Well, it's what the path I've chosen right now. <laughs> you know, we don't have to say, we don't always have to say it's working, but sometimes I'm very grateful for like everything I've had. But you know, sometimes you're like, well, I'd love to be the exception, not the rule, but that's always it. Uh, this is just a fun quote from one of our, one of our content creator friends who I hope is watching at home so we can see his quote. But you know, do what you love sounds great in theory, I love playing RPGs, but RPGs do not love me enough to pay me to pay all my bills. Making an RPG pays you even less, <laughs> just so you know. Uh, and you actually pay money out of pocket on occasion. So I want to talk about how we kind of got here, because a lot of people have talked about it. There have been articles about, you know, the tanking economy, but specifically the tanking creator economy that we're all noticing lower view counts, we're noticing sub drops, we're noticing Patreon drops, just not a lot of views on YouTube or wherever you are making content. I know we keep talking about Twitch, but all of us do things outside of Twitch because that's how we wound up here. Um, and these are things where, you know, we've talked about these things all kind of ad nauseum ourselves. We've done panels about them, um, but is there any, so each of us pick one thing to kind of focus on stuff. Because six of us talk about this whole slide, that's the rest of the time. I mean, I know what I want to talk about, but we'll start with you. I have just two points to make in this one. I know you told me to pick one, but I'll be fast in both. Um, Don't be that person that has a, has a comment instead of a question. <laughs> I know, um, I'm so bad. Um, so the economy one, um, that was mentioned briefly earlier, but we live, especially streamers and content creators, where big brands won't work with smaller streamers because that's too much tracking. It's not going to be worth time and investment when you can track three people's metrics over the same amount of impressions of multiple people. There's sort of an ease there. And then we live in a space where smaller brands, especially when we think about games or studios or anyone that works in the same space we do, like they are similar to ourselves of where they're also on their path to make money. So for them, the, not only do they not have a lot of income, the money's not there. So as creators, we live in a weird, um, especially on the smaller end, a weird um, financeless space where those brands aren't always there for us. They do come along, but I think I had a really good meeting where it's just like, what are those brands for our space? Like what are the, like for like beauty influencers, they have small beauty brands that work with them and pay them. But what, are, what is the, our version of that for us? And I think that's something that a lot of companies are looking to do in the future. And then um, for parasocial relationships, my biggest tip always is here is that people, I mean, we call this Cloud Chasers Anonymous, um, and we see people do that all the time, but um, the people who you come up with and work with, your peers who you surround yourself with, that's who like those people you wanna Cloud Chase, that's actually who you can all be together like rise with your peers and like invest time and work with each other as opposed to 
working, trying to work with someone bigger or better than you because you think that'll benefit you with how, somehow. At the end of the day, that won't. They're there to see that person, not necessarily you. You can benefit some from it, but like rise up with your peers. I think that's such an, something I'm so grateful for in this last year is like meeting people and like connecting with them and then like just coming up together and really like working and having genuine relationships. And you're like, it's not cloud chasing because really we're all on the same level. Like we're all on the same place meetings, same events, same whatever, that's like, I think a great tip that you'll probably benefit from a lot more. Uh, the one I'm going to focus on is uh, no idea how much work goes into making content after hitting the goal. You hit a goal, great, okay. Um, if you wanna keep making content and you wanna keep making something of it, you're gonna have to set another goal and another goal and another goal. It is never ending. You are constantly having to reiterate to review what you're doing, to look back and see what works, what doesn't. It is so much just, I, I think I've like, it's like this puzzle game where there's like tiles and you like move them around to make a picture. It's, it's very that, like that, <laughs> that came up in my brain for some reason. But it, there is so much little stuff. Like I know we've talked about like, oh, you have to be your own brand, your own marketing, but the having the goal of oh like i'm just gonna make it i'm gonna be a big content creator that mindset is not going to get you well the exception of like making it and wanting to be like you know the top like one percent that i guess you see that's not going to drive you um to get to a point where you are i guess like happy with your content that's a hard lesson i had to learn because I'm unfortunately extremely ambitious <laughs> and I do too much and I take on too much. You have to really sit back and like look at yourself and see why exactly you want to do this. It can't just be to make it. Yeah, no, I like that. I'm, I, I'm letting it digest a little bit. It's soaking in. I like that. Um, I'm going to focus on the parasocial relationship aspect of it. People are gonna give you money, and that's great. There are sometimes maybe people who throw like hundreds of dollars at you, also very great. Good for you, that's awesome. Do not sell your soul to people. You are your own person. Allow yourself to be your own person. Just because somebody gives you money doesn't mean that you owe them anything outside of showing up and doing your job. Um, there are people out there who will try to buy you. Don't be one of those people who can be bought because you will end up miserable. I promise you, do not be a people pleaser in this space because that is a really, really good way to fast track yourself to one, burning out, and two, not having a chance to make it. You have to find your voice in this space. You have to, I'm not gonna say find what makes you stand out because unfortunately we at some point all share something that is not necessarily super different from somebody else. Um, but be yourself and do not settle for anything outside of doing that. Do not allow people to take your power because they will. You are a person. You cannot be bought. You are not a number on the internet. Period. A mic drop. Just kidding. Uh, I just want to touch on the check mark is not a paycheck. Uh, I am, well, at least for, oh, two weeks, is it? I'll, be, I'll still have a legacy check mark on Twitter because um, I ain't paying for it. But there are people who will tag me and always want me to share their fundraiser or something like that or like on Twitch. There are people who see that check mark because it was not always there. It was not a thing you always got from day one. They added it fairly recently. And there's this, just this idea of, well, you're a partner. You must be rich, you must be making money. So this is the thing I'm going to say about that. A lot of people, that first stream, after you get the check mark, it's nice and shiny. Everybody comes through, your homies throw gift subs at you. Oh my God, I'm so happy. Wait 30 days. Go look at your metrics and your payout in 30 days. And that's not, again, to be cruel, that is literally what I've experienced. Or in the idea that, you know, June 2020, when everyone suddenly remembered black content creators existed, and we got pity subs, we got the hype trains. And I will tell on myself, I am at a point where I have 2,400 sub, I had 2,400 sub points. To unlock another emote, 
at least on Twitch, I need 2,600. I will never see that again. And that's not a being, that's not talking down myself. I live in reality. I'm not someone who gets 500 people showing up because I go live. I'm not someone who has people literally following me around a convention or excited to see that I exist. I live in reality. And that moment of pity and that moment of, oh, I, I screwed up. I didn't, I haven't been supporting black creators. It also again stopped in 30 days. It was the end of that, oh, cool, we know you exist. Here's a few subs, here's one-time donation or tip. And then it stopped. So when you get that wave, ride it as hard as you can, knowing that it is going to crash out on the beach, that you'll be stuck, you'll be in the quicksand. Can I, I'm sorry, before, can I just touch on that real quick? People love trauma. Mm and they will support you in your most traumatic moments. And that is it. Mm -hmm. There are very few people who will show up for you when the good things are happening. I'm not saying that to be a buzzkill. I'm saying that because it is very, 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 very true. No, it's our lived experience. Yeah, it really is. For, when you stop becoming somebody else's Jerry Springer episode, and you stop becoming entertaining because it is not their life and they get to watch it through an outside perspective, an outside lens, a lot of the time the financial stability and support that they give you also stops. So I just wanted to kind of say, you know, piggyback off of that because I think that's important to kind of say. Um, I'm going to take a little bit about what Henry and, and Raven said and talk about the others who have turned the content creation point here. Um, I think the six of us in particular, right, there's a lot of types of streamers, there's a lot of communities of streamers, there's a lot of approaches to streaming. I think the six of us have not identical communities or anything like that, but we have a similar style. We are all socially aware. We all, right, there are certain things that we all do. So we are part of a particular portion of Twitch. And supporting each other and rising tide for our peers and all of that is absolutely something that I, I think the six of us, at least, would very strongly agree with. You have got, and we've all said this in, in various ways already today, but you got to go into it knowing exactly what you want, how you're going to get it, and also, and, and this is the point that I want to make here, you know, how your priority list, right? For me, because of things that I've already talked about, right, my Twitch channel is important to me, but is not my, my primary center for creation, is certainly not my primary center for income. And so for me, it isn't a zero-sum game. If, if, if one of my longtime community members starts streaming, I'm absolutely going to share their streams and I'm going to do this. And it's very exciting. The reality is, right, that there is every possibility that some folks from my stream who have been subbing to me, who can maybe only afford a certain number of subs, may move over to that other creator that I've been hyping up. And that is a in my personal list of priority orders, hyping up and rising tide is higher up than those handful of people's subs. But you have to know that about you, right? And it's not, it's okay if your priority is different. It's okay if you need that sub, right? You feel like you need that. It doesn't mean that you're going to be negative about your community members who start streaming. You're going to go after them, right? But you just have to know what your priority order is because otherwise you're going to get into situations where you're not going to have that ready and somebody's going to ask you to share something or somebody's going to say, oh, I would love to sub to you, but I just, pay, you know, I just donated a ton of money to somebody else's fundraiser for a thing and I can't. And you, you got to know how you're going to respond because otherwise, oops, you're live and you're upset or you want to try and make it whatever, whatever, right? Know your priority order because lots of folks create not everybody has, you know, lots of folks have very finite budgets for, crea for supporting of creators and fundraisers and social justice causes and all of these things that, again, our corner of Twitch is very involved in. And, and there isn't, it's so easy to feel that there is a morally correct order of those priorities. And th there really isn't, right? There is a, certainly a, a <laughs> a morally preferable way to interact with your coworkers and your peers and your whatever, right? But you, you don't have to necessarily say the most important thing is that when someone in my community starts streaming, I make sure that they get huge, right? That doesn't have to be your first priority. You're allowed to prioritize yourself and your income, but you gotta know what order that comes in so that when push comes to shove, you can make decisions based on 
what you know to be your priorities. And also, just before I get to my point, but to add on to that is, for some of us, we've been in this space for quite a while, and your journey and your priorities will change over time. Like maybe you say, hey, I really want to try and make a go of being a full-time content creator. And then maybe a few months in, you're like, you know what, I, this isn't great for me. Like setting aside the financials for a moment, because that's always going to be difficult, but maybe it's not enjoyable for you. Or maybe the mental stress is you're just like, this gives me too much anxiety. Your objectives, your goals can change over time um, to the point I think earlier is like, I have a day job. And that was a decision I made very early on that I didn't want to hang my hat of my financial stability on content creation. Um, and so it could be something that was fun for me and I could set my priorities differently because it's not contingent on whether I'm gonna have, be able to pay rent next month. Um, but my point, which is I think wrapped up in a lot of this, and Henry, I think you mentioned it earlier that people who can make their living by being really successful on one platform are the exception, not the norm. And I think that there's always this like, oh, I know this really big streamer, I wanna be like them, or this big YouTuber. And I'm gonna rain on the parade a little, y'all. Um, I try oftentimes to use a comparison that people will understand. So um, these are hard numbers, and I'm gonna use sports. The number of high school football players that make it to playing in college is 7.3%. And of the college players who make it to the NFL, it's 1.6%. So when you're playing in high school, you have a less than 1% chance of being drafted into the NFL. And I think that there's always this grand vision because it is played up in media and there's always somebody there who's being really successful and that's great but to the point about grounding ourselves in reality that's really hard to do you have to be talented you have to be in the right place at the right time you have to be lucky there's so many aspects of that and I think there's always this like I'm gonna make it well what is making it mean to you and do you actually want to be that? Because that is so, so difficult and such, honestly, an unrealistic vision. And so it's, it, it sounds bad, but I'm usually like, all right, you have a less than 1% chance of doing this. Do you still want to do it? Is that still your goal? Or do you want to maybe set something smaller for you to achieve over time? I, I want to speak on this because uh, this is something that I... <laughs> it's true in content creation, it's true in sports, and it was true in my first career in, in theater, right? Broadway. I'm going to be on Broadway. I went to school for theater and singing, and I'm going to be on Broadway. I've lived in New York City for uh, over a decade. I've worked a ton. I have made my living in theater as a performer, as a, as a music director, and I've never worked on Broadway. Um, your goals, not only you have to be realistic about them, but they can change. And that's so hard. If you spent your entire childhood playing football and wanting to play in the NFL, it's really hard to let that go. And I'm going to wrap this so that I don't get emotional about this, but the realities of the world around us, right, are, are rough. But it's so easy to see the shiny at the end of the tunnel, and we have such a, particularly in this country, there's such a, like, hustle culture about, like, claw your way there and you'll make it. And, and I don't, please don't misinterpret what I'm saying. I'm not saying give up on the dreams, right? But understand that, like, it is, it is okay for those dreams and those goals to change. It is okay for the, your path to that goal to not look anything like what you expected to. It is okay for the dream to take longer, to never happen, any of those things. But again, that's all hard stuff that apparently I'm, I'm the eyes open guy on the, on the panel today. But you just have to, you have to be ready for that and that's hard. I, I will be, I, you know, a little moment of, of vulnerability and transparency for you all. I'm going through it right now, trying to decide if I'm going back to, to theater. I loved my career there. I never was on Broadway. 
and now it's, you know, do I have the, is that still what I want? Do I have the energy to make all of these hard choices, but in theater, right, and try and go back and do that thing? I don't know. I wanted to do that since I was five, y'all. It is really hard to let go of. And I haven't let go of it yet, but it's, but it's a reality that I am, that I was not expecting to have to sort of come to at this point in my life, and I am. So, so be ready for that and understand that none of this stuff is a commentary on you, your talent, your ability as a creator, actor, sports star, right? There are so many things, and this is hard to accept, particularly, again, in this country where we have this absurd myth, right, of clawing our way up into the bootstrap, whatever, that's not even, doesn't make sense in physics. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> If you're not wearing boots, up, can you pull yourself up by bootstraps? Does that mean? Anyway. I mean. <laughs> um, so you want to keep fighting, and sometimes that's awesome, and I don't, I'm not, it's, it's such a, I don't know, I'm, I'm sort of going in circles now, because obviously I'm uh, struggling with it too, but, you know, be ready and be kind to yourselves. I know. Um, so that's actually a good segue into our last slide before Q&A. I'm not going to belabor it because we've talked about basically every point on this, mm -hmm. but I wanted to give everyone kind of a tangible. This is where you take your photo of the slide and go think about it. Go back and watch this VOD. Uh, but the biggest thing, and also I'm going to put out the call, please line up for Q&A. The, the mic is on the side I am pointing at, which I think is my left. I don't know. It's day four. <laughs> my left, you're right, um, because it's day four. I don't know directions anymore. <laughs> Um, but basically, I just wanted to kind of reiterate two points that Eugenio also brought up. Be okay with you not being a content creator, because it sucks to hear. Not everyone is good at this. Not everyone is going to make a career or pay their bills. None of us on this panel are paying our bills entirely as being content creators, and that is okay. And can I, can I just add to that, right? The two things that she said, not everyone is good at this and not everyone is going to make it, are not the same statement, right? To, to reiterate what I just said, right? That's not the same. You can be incredibly good at this and not make it. You, you can be kind of bad at this and make it sometimes too, but that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> <laughs> that is an after dark panel I'll submit for Pax West. <laughs> of when when you see people that are trash yet they're making way more money than you how do you deal with that um look i've watched some people on twitch where i'm like you are the, you are boring oh no i started you, something now <laughs> no just very quickly because i do want to make sure we have time for q a yeah, yeah. but there are some people where i've watched them and i'm like you are the most boring and I almost swore, and I had to remember <laughs> being streamed. But you're boring, and you are n there's you're not engaging with the people who've shown up for you. You've got hundreds of people. At least if your CCV is real and you ain't bought no followers, how? When you sit there and think about, I engage with my community, I talk to people, I welcome them to chat, but yet I may get 50 people on a good day. All right. Um, I do want to be mindful of time. We, I want to get everyone in line. So please, hello, welcome. Please have a question or I will tell you to go find one. Hi, uh, welcome to Hillsborough First Time Caller. Uh, how if you could speak on uh, how to identify, thank you. I was wondering if you could speak on how to identify predatory companies who try to work with streamers and not really give as much as the streamers give, essentially. Oh, I. I got you. We have ten, <laughs> we have ten minutes and two other people. Yeah, no. Let's, I'll, yeah, thirty seconds or less. Um, follow their website. Check to see if there are reviews. That's a really easy way to do it. See if they work with other creators. Um, see if those creators are real. Um, a lot of times on websites, if they do work with creators, they will have stock photos. Mm. Um, and like false testimonials. Um, but if, my biggest thing is follow your gut. Yeah. If you don't feel good about it, your community is not gonna feel good about it. Thank you. You're welcome. Ooh, can I add one thing to, um, for anybody who wants to do charity stuff, there are resources for you to be able to check both the validity of a company or charity reaching out to you and also um, how they spend their money so that you feel good about what you're trying to fundraise for and you feel good about vouching it for it to your community. Hi, um, my question is a little more, I guess, YouTube-based, because that's what I focus on. 
Um, I want to know um, what are some actual like realistic goals outside of a subscriber count, and I know it may depend on your content, that you should really be focusing on? Um, unless someone else wants to take it, I could. For YouTube, you know, are you, are you trying to build something? Are you trying to monetize? So those are things you have to think about. Am I trying to make sure every video gets 100 views, 1,000 views? If you're streaming on YouTube, are you trying to go for a certain view count? Because for those that just don't know, to be a YouTube partner, you need 4,000 unique views on your videos and I believe 1,000 followers to get a, a vanity URL. So sit down and actually think about for what I'm putting out, do I want to, every week, am I putting out two short form, one long form? Do I want to make sure I get X number of views per video? And am I trying to monetize? And if so, am I okay with ads? Am I okay with sponsors? Am I seeking sponsors? And then think about a media kit. What is it you're doing with the content you're putting on YouTube? Because I upload a lot of what I do on Twitch to YouTube, but I'm not doing live content there. This is a, a permanent home for the things I've done on Twitch because Twitch does not hold everything even as a partner. So sit down and make some tangible goals of I want to get 100 views per video, 50 views. I want to make sure that I tweet out twice a week that I've uploaded something. I'll also add in too that the algorithm sometimes can change. So again, considering what your goals are, it's like, do you want it to be a base number of views per video? Do you want it to be the amount of time that somebody spends on your video? Because if you're doing, you know, 30 minute long videos, but people only hang out for a minute, then maybe you need to think about the content you're doing and the audience you're reaching. Um, so there's a lot of factors there depending on what your goal is. And it's to, to that point to, to think about what you want to set and then how you're working towards it. Yeah, keep on the algorithm because sometimes that will completely block your content, like no matter what your size is. Just try to keep like up to date with like, the, like from YouTube experts, like the news on that. Okay, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I just had a question about like, um, what do you think about having streams and then turning those streams into YouTube videos, which then you can kind of split into more short form content? What do you guys kind of think about like that content strategy uh, to grow your platform? Yes. Yes, I, yes. It's, it's what I do. Um, for those that don't know, Com Join Combo is a service you can pay for where it will automatically upload your Twitch clips into Twitter, I'm sorry, YouTube Shorts, Instagram, and TikTok. It, it, there's a free and a paid version, but um, all the clips that Lady Luck takes of my channel wind up on TikTok thanks to that. But it is a good thing because you got a small digestible thing you can tweet at people to promote future content you, or you can tag a company. Look, I use this Logitech brand thing in my video and then you can get their attention or at least get a retweet or something. I would also say just, uh, so two things. One, make sure that you understand the difference in the platform itself, right? Because with Twitch, the video that you're taking, if you're live, right, on Twitch, there's going to be interaction with the chat, there's going to be breaks, there's going to be this and that, right? And as you said, you're editing, right? So we can take the break out here and there. But if you're someone like me, right, a lot of my YouTube videos are a little strange because I spend a lot of my streams talking back and forth with the chat, reacting to things that they say. It doesn't play great in a VOD, right, after the fact, unless it's edited well enough because um, the chat isn't there and this and that. So that's number one. And also number two, just, and again, here we are again, eyes open about you're already spending all that time to create it on Twitch. If you're doing editing, right, and really making a, a clean finished product that's different for YouTube, that is at least now you've doubled your, your work time for that, at least, right? So just make sure that as you're doing that, you're, you know, and there's, you can either think about changing up the way that you stream so that the editing is less or whatever, whatever, but that's, that's a lot more work just to be ready for. Right. Work smarter, yeah. not harder. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. True, <laughs> true, I agree. Um, I was also wondering, have you guys heard of the Silly Hour podcast? No. No? No? No. Understandable. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yay, we got the Q&A. Hey. Um, a question about sponsored streams. Mm. Is there anything that you find frustrating when you're working with brands? And is there anything that developers and publishers can be more accommodating of or understanding of when they're working with you? In this moment, I wish Brian was here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I should, I one, of our, channel him. one of our friends talks about this quite a bit. I've talked a lot. Does anyone have anything before I hop in? I just have one tiny thing. Um, I would say that a lot of brands have um, difficulty understanding or 
maybe not understanding, but the work that goes behind certain deliverables. Mm -hmm. So sometimes those all-inclusive deliverable packages um, can be very in-depth that, you know, that's great for the brand, I understand, like, what, why a brand would want that, and that feels like a complete, like, package of what they get. But behind all those deliverables, like, each one is, like, multiple hours and hours of work. So I think there needs to be some, like, creator to brand reframing of what you're actually getting for what you're paying and, like, the actual understanding the work that goes behind it. Because I think some things those packages can be very brand sided and not creator sided. And it's just like, we're already exhausted. So that makes it a lot more difficult. I will say um, there's only been a few times where I've had an issue with how things were expected to be worded um, because they were very far off the mark for my community. So being able to give bullet points of things that absolutely need to be touched upon um, and, you know, said for the product, but allowing the creator to have a little bit of a free reign to tailor it to their community is mm. really important, mm. especially if you want the impact to go as far as it can, because the, the creator themselves are going to know their communities best. Um, reaching out, like checking a creator's content before you reach out. When you get dear creator name, emails, and I'm like, you have no idea what I do. I'm sorry, that's Stream Raiders. Um, look, I said it. When they copy your Twitter name and the email, like what? The whole thing. When they like put the, when they just like copy paste your entire Twitter yes. name, so it'll be like friends ex or like calamity in Texas East. <laughs> like, it's like VTuber and then like the the numbers for the emote. <laughs> um, but like, the main thing is uh, clarity timeliness expectation and then if you want me to do two two hour streams you want me to have a panel on my channel and you offer me fifty dollars be prepared to be laughed at mm. um but also do you want to use my vod do you want to use my content after yes. Yes. what are you expecting are you just going to take my vod and do that then what are you paying me to use that mm -hmm. um and a contract mm -hmm. do not work with anybody mm -hmm. without a contract or at least an agreement of I will stream, let's say, Resident Evil 4. I'll stream it for four hours, one day, I'll have a command, you can use my clips, here's my rate, are we good? And then when do you need that video, when do you need that clip from me? So things in writing, also a media kit for what I'm doing. Mm. If you want me to go tweet out whatever, provide me with GIFs, provide me with screenshots, especially if it's a pre-release thing. Yeah. Um, we have three minutes, are you good with your answer? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Three minutes. Let's go. Okay. Hey guys, um, I just have okay, first a little bit of background. So no, I have. We get to the question because we've only got about two okay. minutes left. So I have ADHD, and it's very hard for me to like learn that technology to begin streaming. And I have that passion, I have that drive, and I've done so much research and learning. But just learning the technology is really hard. What advice would you guys have towards like just learning the technology? I also have ADHD you need to figure out what forms of learning work best for you. Mm. I am somebody that needs to watch videos and I need to have somebody to bounce ideas off of and explain it to me. That is how I learn best. So if you are somebody who learns by reading, find literature out there, take notes, find things that work for you. Um, if you are also somebody who is very visual in learning like I am, there are a plethora, I could give you lists of people to watch, to find answers who, create content about creating content that is easily digestible. And I have no problem if you want, um, right out there, we can talk a little bit more about it, because I've had to navigate this as well. And it, it is very difficult and sometimes not neurodiverse friendly. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Hi, just really quickly, I wanted to know um, what are you all's number one recommendations for connecting with peers um, and building that community to um, help propel your your creativity forward um i'd say create a discord but know that creating a discord and thinking build it and they will come is not the answer be present talk to your community engage with your community or your viewers when you're starting and as much as i'm loath to say it while twitter exists it is the way that i have <laughs> no it's the way that i've met basically everyone on this panel through yeah. twitter through people being in chats and being honest and being authentic Mm -hmm. Don't be a crab in a barrel. <laughs> I'll also add to be, um, 
I'm trying to think of a good word for this. Be deliberate. Like, if you say, hey, it'd be great to hang out, nothing's ever going to happen. Um, if you'd be like, oh, it'd be great to collab, nothing's ever going to happen. It's very open ended, what have you. When you reach out to people, be like, hey, I saw your content, you know, I saw you were playing Raft, and I'm terrible at it, but I love doing Raft. You'd want to just like get a game together someday. And we can just, hey, I know you normally stream on Saturday, Sunday. Can we do a Tuesday night? You know, Yep. Be willing to be very specific about what you're asking of or why you're coming in to speak to somebody because if you leave it open ended, nothing's ever going to happen. It's like making plans with your friends. You're like, oh, we're going to get together one day, and then it never happens. Yeah. yeah, and unfortunately, we are at time, but we can hang out with you after, after this panel. Uh, we'll be outside or wherever they direct us to. Thank you all so much for hanging out. Thanks for everybody watching. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks, all.